Greetings, all praise King Selassie. So I mean, I just heard that a man in this area of Florida has sued the state to be able to grow marijuana on his yard uh, because he has cancer. And supposedly this is according to the bill that was passed last year uh, that never did provide anyone with any relief except for you know those that are actively worshiping the man beast and I'm trying to figure out why you gotta wait for the state to give you authority when Ross is right here telling you you can grow on your yard whether you have cancer or not because this is a herb that was placed on the earth in Genesis 1:11 before man now, I just made a video yesterday to check. So what the man does now is corrupt that which is pure. And this is called debauchery. And by branding this fella's name, who also happens to be a gay owner of strip clubs and the most famous one, in the Tampa Bay area, which is supposed to be the capital of strip club clubs. Um, he now has his name attached to this ruling. So in other words, he becomes some kind of a hometown hero. And forevermore, you know, when people think about the legalization of marijuana, you know, they're gonna think about him, the gay strip club owner. And you see this now, how the military has put their personnel in place to be able to operate these dispensaries and profit. When those that just choose to use the herb peacefully, you know, to go into the wilderness and to smoke a joint and meditate and praise Jah, have gone to the penitentiary. And parole and cost them, you know, divided up families. You know, for instance, like myself, you know, my mom always used to say, you know, that I was, you know, like a druggie. And like, you know, so I try to keep it from her because I never wanted my mother to think of me like this. And then like, she got cancer and she talked to my cousin in California, who's also a doctor, and recommended that she use the cannabis. And, and because of that, it changed her perception about cannabis and she told me she used, I gave her some, and she said she had some wonderful dreams. And we never discussed it then, after that. So, now the man wants to take over the business. You know, the man was already orchestrating uh, drug trade from Mexico and previous to that, South America. And, you know, everything was covert, but it was done underneath his system. So what was to prevent him from doing it? And it was profitable. And if you don't think man's doing that, then you must think that, you know, eating a Twinkie is good for you. So, this system now is so absurdly, disgustingly, dirty and the way that people have to fight is not by calling a lawyer is not by getting cancer is by making a mo excuse me memory was full so I know that people are supposed to provide evidence but really how are you supposed to provide evidence you know the man has so much technology man is watching over everyone the moment you start to catch up to him psh, He's gone, right around the corner. So, they got drones, drones is watching you all the time, except when it's raining. That's when you gotta do something, when it rains. Don't wait till the sun comes up, because the satellites and the drones, they see and everything you're doing. They're probably obviously working on technology to eliminate this. They got the heat uh, detection. And you wonder, where did this come from? It came from them trying to find marijuana crops. Because every time it's flowering, a little bit of heat gives off. And then helicopters will pick it up. 
but really people are gonna have to stand their ground that means if the police want to take you to jail for growing a plant let them take you to jail and make sure you go to trial it request a jury trial and defend yourself because if you if you pay for a lawyer he's gonna make sure that you suffer just there's certain rules in the courtroom you have to learn but the most important thing is to speak up because if you don't say anything it won't go into the record and you got to speak about the ATF there's a court ruling that happened in Chicago that proved underneath their system that they were the drug runners of the United States um, I think some of the agencies have, have taken over now um, especially the uh, the border patrols uh, they're, they're still involved but right now they're trying to open the doorway to let some of their players in to profit off of this so-called legal business I remember the uh, prosecutor was recommending a year sentence in jail for being caught with a joint of marijuana and a small wooden pipe and at the same time my lawyers tell me how he just got back from Colorado this was when the marijuana was legalized in Colorado and he said he just got back with another one of his lawyer's friends. They went out there to have a good time, smoke some herb and whatnot. So you see how it works now. The lawyers are getting paid. They're taking all the money from the poor people and they're going about the world and they're, they're using their system of law so that if they want to go have legalized pornography, they can go here. If they want to go and smoke marijuana, they can go here. But the thing is, is that with this division, this income division, it's becoming affordable to do all these things for certain people and not affordable for others. And that's the trap. So, I and I people stand your ground. You go out in public, burn one. Don't take two or three joints with you. Just take one. Because if the police roll up, psh, step on it. And do this kind of thing. Right now, there's a formation of the culture to uh, discourage people, you know, frown upon uh, these kinds of behaviors. Never mind all that, man. Every time Iron Man burns a spliff, Babylon goes down. Always keep in mind the end goal.